everyone. This has been Kelly with the Endeavoring Orthodoxy podcast. Uh, today, I want to talk about a little bit about postmodernism and the role of narratives and theology and really just reality and how we kind of lie to ourselves sometimes uh, by making up our own stories and attaching a lot of importance to our own personal narrative. And so I've titled this episode, The Postmodern Lie, Narrative as Reality. And so I was really not sure what to talk about this week. I had a few ideas, but nothing really stuck until I was listening to another podcast about how the intellectual climate today tells us that we can create, in a sense, whatever reality we want based on the narratives or stories we tell about ourselves. Mainly, this type of idea comes from a postmodern line of thinking that states whatever we experience as reality is culturally determined. Now, such ideas become culturally determined. Notice how I say they are culturally determined as if there are independent causes to cultural determinancy, but they become culturally determined through the use of narrative to achieve power. Now, a lot of a lot of language used today, whether it's political or social, is all about power. And so the stories we tell are, in a sense, a result of our drive for power. And so our cultural norms are set through this kind of drive for power through narrative. So the postmodern conclusion to all of this was at a high level, and this, this goes back many years, but at a high level to really to distrust all types of what we would call meta narratives or overarching narratives there was a high level of distrust towards any narrative that could explain everything and so an example of this would be a, a dr distrust of orthodox christianity and the message of the gospel because historical christianity really it, it dared to to ground or give a, a grand narrative to describe all of history. And so uh, one of the things that is highly studied today since really the 1990s, um, especially in conservative Protestant theology, is biblical theology, how the entire Bible really works together as one narrative, all pointing towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, this is something that the church has upheld for many, many years, but this has really been a, a something that was, uh, it's been focused on in academic theology a lot in the last 30 years. And so this kind of postmodern distrust would be positioned towards this grand narrative of the Bible that everything in scripture points to this one overarching meta narrative of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we, we get that kind of sense today in our culture where there is a lot of distrust about the narratives we, uh, we use. And what postmodernism would do is it would say, well, this Christian grand narrative that you have in biblical theology where everything is pointing towards the gospel, that's really just a drive for power. And it's using story. It's using language to try to attempt to gain that power. Now, some Christians go along with this type of thinking, not really knowing what they're getting into. Uh, they support progressive ideas of overturning normative narratives in our culture, and they do that for the purpose of really toppling power structures, power structures within society. Um, usually, they see them in service of you know um, pushing down people of my minority status, whether that's of race or gender issues. And so a lot of Christians go along with this mistrust of meta narrative type of thing because they believe that those narratives are used for the purpose of power to push down those who are quote unquote oppressed in our culture. And, and what these Christians always lack is an understanding of the philosophies at the root of their thinking and the very fact that it's historic Christianity that gives them any kind of foundation to actually argue their differing perspectives. And so this kind of freedom to think, this kind of freedom to critique and to analyze, it, it, it's built 
within um you know it's part of the liberal tr tradition of the west but that all that a lot of that comes from uh christianity setting the stage for that and so i i personally would even go so far to say that christians like this who who push this down um who you know propose this kind of thinking this kind of postmodern thinking they're probably not even christians in the first place as their allegiance is really to cultural progressivism rather than jesus christ and the and the message of the gospel and so at the heart of this kind of postmodern lie this idea that we can create whatever reality we want through our own stories or narratives there's there's a lie and for the christian it lies in direct contradiction to the life-giving pulse of the gospel message the christian who espouses the idea that we can create our own reality through a type of our own narrative or story is actually committing heresy any kind of christian who promotes this idea that we can really direct reality create our own reality and encourages other people within the culture to do the same is really placing himself against the narrative the gospel of jesus christ and so in the in the bible in john 1 it states that in the beginning the word or the logos it there it was and it was with god and so the word is typically identified with jesus christ but the word is also the revelatory story or narrative of god it is they're they're one and the same it's not just it's not just the bible it's not just christ it's not just this message they bear they they all blend in together christ is the incarnate word that we see in the world who is proclaiming the kingdom of god it is the story of god coming into this world to save his people and so all things are made all things are made through this word we see that in the bible and then all things have life through this word and so in essence it is the speech of god this rel revelatory story his own narrative that has created reality and brought everything into his providential care and so this idea this this false idea of our cultural reality being spoken into existence through our own words runs contrary to the metaphysical the cosmic and the providential reality we see that is literally spoken into existence by god and so the christian who says otherwise really dares to go against the revelatory reality of god now this this has big problems for us today this is this is not simply a moral problem where christians ought to think it morally wrong for a person to decide his own gender as an example no it, it's this is a much deeper problem than the applications we see in our culture today it's it it is a moral problem yes it's also a a psychological problem it's also a theological problem in that it has certain metaphysical claims about our universe certain claims about ultimate reality that just run contrary to that reveal word of god and so it's a theological problem because in it we attempt to say we can speak ultimate reality into existence and we defy the spoken reality and existence that was created by god himself and so it is sinful and, and this is where we get back into the moral problem it is sinful because this defiance demonstrates that through me claiming i can create reality through my own story it puts me at the center of reality where i have actually idolized myself i become an idol and i do not put god in the proper place it's a sinful way of thinking this whole postmodern lie this whole distrust of the grand narrative and and then turning inward to create our own narratives and use language for our own reality it, it's sinful because it puts us at the center 
and we idolize ourselves rather than seeing God in his rightful place. And so that's where that's where it becomes a moral problem because that's where we see people acting immorally. And so it but it's not just a moral problem. It's it's deeper that. And so in a sense within the cultural climate today because we elevate our own narrative so much we in a sense are building our own table or tower of babel where we think we can ascend or progress to take the place of god now if you're not familiar tower of babel is a story in genesis where the people of the earth got together and they tried to build this tower reaching up into the heavens so that people could commune with god and god said the people are going to build their way up to heaven we have to confuse their language their language must be confused so that they cannot achieve this great thing and so what is interesting about the story of the tower of babel is that god intervenes in the story and confuses the language of the people he takes away their power to place themselves in the place of god by taking away their language now think about that for a second, we've been talking about narrative and talking about how we create our own story. And then we go back to this old, old story. Some people may even think of it as mythology. It talks about God intervening and confusing people's language so that they could not really ascend to the place of God by the use of their language. Now, in the past, now in this postmodern culture of today where we are essentially attempting to progress ourselves into the place of God by literally redefining reality through our own speech, what becomes the outcome where God decides to destroy the bond of language that we are attempting to use to ascend to his place today? You know, so that's, that's a question that we have to ask. That's a question we have to ponder because surely we are not the first people it would be um, very arrogant of us to think that we are the first culture of people to have this problem. And so what does, what does that look like if God confuses the language today? And so this is, this is dangerous because stories like Babel exist for a reason. Whether, whether you believe God actually intervened or not has no bearing to the fact that a story like this reveals great truth about human nature you could believe this story is a myth in a supernatural sense i personally do not i believe this story is true it is the word of god but even if you do believe it is a myth you can still understand a great truth from this story and that great truth is that we cannot ascend to become something that we are not there is an essential nature when i when i talk about we i'm talking about us as humans, all, the entire human race. There is an essential nature to all of us, and we cannot get beyond that essential nature, whether our mode of ascension is biological or ideological or something else. There are some places, there are some aspects, there, there is something that we are not meant to ascend to. We cannot build it ourselves up there. And so, but our progressive culture today it works hard to deny this essential nature. And it, what it does is we've been doing this for a long time, really. This, is, this denial is how American culture can really slaughter children in the womb without a thought. There is, there is nothing that, is assen that essentially binds us together as human beings. And so, therefore, we can dispose of those we don't value, i.e. children in the womb. All right, so there's there's a problem here is that we're working hard to deny this essential nature and we're doing that because if we deny that essential nature it allows us or at least we think it does to ascend to a place where we ought not go. And so we do this by taking our individuality to absurd ends. There's there's nothing wrong with individuality as it is as long as the individual realizes he belongs to something bigger than himself. But the moment the individual becomes the center of his own universe, his own existence, 
not seeing anything that essentially links him to others, that is when he believes the lie that he can create reality through his own story. He believes he can make come to pass whatever he wants. And our culture is pushing this hard. It is trying hard to indoctrinate our youth, our kids today, by telling them that your story matters. Anything you do, whatever you want, you, what, your story matters. Not you matter, your story. And so what, what I often reply to that is say, no, you as a human, you matter. Your story where you attempt to create whatever reality you want is not nearly as important as you. And so we are, we're currently bringing up a generation by telling them that there are no essential values that bind us together, that make us similar as human beings, that any violation that you experience is not a violation that is shared across the human race, but is a violation specifically because it distorts, distracts, or destroys your own so-called reality, your story. Your essence and your identity is not tied to a greater bond of humanity, but is whatever you project it to be. And so if, if you want to believe you're a cat living in a human body, then that is your story. You do not have to, you do not share essential characteristics with other human beings in this culture today. And so this is this is the incredible lie the people have to convince themselves of that they are the creators of their own story and they they are trying hard to ascend to a a moral, religious and psychological category that was previously held by something greater than themselves. Some examples in different cultures would be, you know, different cultures had the gods. They had a, a polytheistic vision of many gods and and the place where the people were trying to ascend to was the gods, but they couldn't. Or it might be, you know, the Christian conception of God, you know, which is also um, Jewish and um, some aspects of Islamic. You know, there's there is the Abrahamic faith God out there, you know, that people, especially in Babel, people try to ascend to. They couldn't. There's that warning there. You can't get there. For some people, we've seen this in the last few hundred years in the, you know, in the West, um, but we've also seen it in the past and other forms of history. The state becomes something that takes that place that people or individuals may try to ascend to, but they can never get there. And that that's that's what we're talking about here. This is it's, a, it's an incredible lie that our culture is telling us where we can create a story that puts us at the center of the universe and creates our own reality. So and it's no wonder so many people in our culture today are plagued by psychological problems like stress, anxiety, and depression. They are attempting to build a tower to the heavens and take the place of God, and they simply they cannot do it. They're, they weren't meant to do this. It's an overwhelming endeavor, especially when you take into account that you run into tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people who are trying to make that same journey up the tower themselves, and they have no thought of you while they're doing it. And so it almost becomes like a, a cultural battle of king of the hill. You know, everyone is trying to create the greater story to um, trump the other stories to push out the other stories out of the way and, and and you may be a character in that other person's story but you only play a minor role you, you're not the main character you're not important you have no essential nature that links us and bonds us together as human beings and so at least the people of Babel were working together towards a common goal the only thing common about our culture is that we all want to be in the place where we become 
the center of the universe where we become gods of our own reality. And this is, this is the vein that the gospel story touches because it places the incarnate word or the story of God into human history and accomplishes what humans could not do themselves. The God-man Jesus Christ is the one who was able to ascend that tower where we fail. And so the lie of our age is that each of our own stories matter to the point that we literally define all boundaries and conceive of our own reality through our story. And this is simply a lie. A culture cannot be sustained with such hyper-individualism. We ought to learn to call this kind of thinking out. We ought to learn to understand what this thinking is, how to identify it for its shallowness, and to point out how it has literally bankrupted our culture and it continues to ruin the lives of people because it's promising them something that they were not meant for. And so there are some things we were not meant to ascend to. And there are certain gaps in our lives we cannot fill on our own. The moment we become suspicious and, and we seek to replace God's meta-narrative is simultaneously the time our own foundation begins to crumble because we attempt to define all reality through our own story. And so that's all I got today. It's a bit of a shorter podcast. But uh, those were just some thoughts I had this week. Um, if you've listened to this point in the podcast, thank you for listening. Uh, please like, subscribe, anything like that. Um, just to let you know, I will, I'm will. i working a new job during the summer, so my podcast may be a little bit more sparse. We'll see how things go, especially in a few weeks when my graduate school really um, ramps up. So. Um, if you're listening still, uh, God bless you. Thank you. Just continue to pursue uh, God's word and knowledge and truth and that uh, we would be illuminated by the spirit and that um, he would lead us to discern things within our culture that are just uh, not his and that we would take all those ideas captive for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you and have a good day.